Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this video, I'm going to talk about hypothesis testing for the population variance. And this is an example of having a two-sided or two-tailed hypothesis test. Okay, um, here are the variance of scores on a standardized mathematics test for all high school seniors was 150 in 2019. So this is the result uh, previously obtained in 2019 and a sample of scores of 20 high school seniors so this is the sample size so this is n who took the test this year give a variance of 170 so this is the sample variance test at the 5% significance level if the variance of current scores of all high school seniors on this test is different from 150 and this statement here uh, gives you an indication of the alternative hypothesis because there is this um, keyword here different from 150 150 is the previous result which you can assume to be the value of null hypothesis different here is not equal to so that is the indication that you are talking about the alternative hypothesis here yeah Assume that the scores of all high school seniors on this test is normally distributed. Okay, approximately normally distributed. Right, uh, let's start with the first step, which is to write down the hypothesis statements. So here we have H null, we have population variance. You're talking about the variance, talking about the population variance here so here we have um, population variance is equal to 150 and here is population variance is different than or not equal to 150 okay next is the second step so step 2 is to obtain the test statistic here we have chi squared n minus 1 s squared over sigma squared so n minus 1 is 20 minus 1 is 19 s squared is 170 so this is the result of our sample and notice that we are comparing the result of this sample with the null hypothesis you are testing the null hypothesis uh, with our experimental result here and the null hypothesis says that sigma squared is equal to 150 therefore 150 here can be substitute, substituted in this position yeah so here we have 150 and you will obtain that the test statistic is going to be 21.53 okay 21.533 okay you can do that uh, Alright, so now let's move on to the third step, which is to find the critical values. Okay, so here the third step is finding the critical values. And we're going to start off with sketching the critical regions first. So here is the chi-square distribution. And we know that um, based on the alternative statement, it is a two-sided test because when you say sigma squared is not equal to 150, it means it can be lower than 150 or it can be greater than 150. So in this case, it can go either in this direction, which is lower than 150, or it can go in this direction, which is bigger than 150. Therefore, we have two critical regions, which is on the left side, and on the right side okay so uh, alpha here is 5% and it needs to be divided by 2 therefore the area here is going to be 0 0.025 and the area here is also going to be equal to 0 0.025 now it is our job to find what is the critical value for this point here this point, I'm going to use another color. I'm going to use this color. 
So what is the critical value at this point? No, I don't like this color. I'm sorry. Uh, this color. At this point. So I'm going to call this point chi squared 0 0.025. Okay, so if you uh, refer to the degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom is 19. So here degrees of freedom is equal to 19. And we're going to look at the, the chi square distribution table. Mm. So this is the chi square distribution table. Degrees of freedom is 19. And the area is 0 0.025, which is this one. So you can go on and read from the table. So 32.852. So that is the critical value. 32.852. Yeah. 32.852. Okay, next is we need to find this value. Okay, and the area here is of course chi squared. Since we know the blue area here is 0 0.025, this blue area is 0 0.025, we know that the area from this point towards the very end is going to be 0 0.975. And this is the value that we need to find from the chi squared distribution table. And if you go on, and refer to the chi square distribution table. This is the area 0 0.975, and the critical value is 8.907. So 8.907 is this one. Okay, so these are the two critical values at this point and this point, respectively. Okay. Now, on the fourth step, we need to, to decide. The fourth step, we need to decide whether the null hypothesis should be rejected or not. And that will be on the basis of comparing this point with the value of uh, 8.9 and 32.85. So where is this position going to be? This position is going to be somewhere in between. So if this is 8.9 and this is 32.8, we know that 21 is going to be somewhere here. So 21.5 might be somewhere here somewhere here in between these two values yeah and because of that we can see that the null hypothesis cannot be rejected because the test statistic doesn't pour into the critical region so write down uh, the process here we can see that the test statistic 21.533 doesn't fall into the critical region therefore H now is unable to be rejected now the conclusion part is going to be relating our alternative statement with what we have to say. So here, because Heshna is unable to be rejected, there is not enough evidence to support the alternative statement. So there is not enough evidence to say that variance of current scores of all high school seniors well basically i'm just going to write down the whole sentence here so there is not enough evidence to say that variance of current scores of all high school seniors on this test is different from 150 so i'm just going to write down the exact sentence as asked by the example given here all right so not enough evidence to say that variance of current scores of all high school seniors on this test is different from 150. So that's the conclusion. Okay, now we are going to try and solve the same example here using the confidence interval approach. Now the first step is writing down the null hypothesis 
and the alternative hypothesis and this is the same stuff which you have seen in the traditional approach but i'm just going to write down here uh, there's population variance is equal to 150 h1 here population variance is not equal to 150 now on the second step we need to obtain the confidence interval and we have learned how to get the confidence interval using this formula chi squared and this is of 4 over 2 okay and this is 1 minus of 4 over 2 Okay, so now we're just going to substitute the value and you will see that n minus 1 here is going to be equal to 19. S squared is 170. And here is going to be 19 and 170. So the top part here is similar. And you will see that at the bottom part, the value of chi squared alpha over 2 and chi squared 1 minus alpha over 2 is this one. So this is... 32.852 and this is 8.907 okay so the small value will be given to this one 8.907 and the big value which is this one will be supplied to the lower limit part here yeah? so this is 32.852 and by doing that, you'll be able to obtain the confidence interval for the variance is going to be between 98.32 and 362.64. So that is the population variance. And uh, to decide whether the null hypothesis should be rejected or not, we are going to compare uh, the position of or the value of null hypothesis with the result given here okay so the value of null hypothesis is 150 and it is included in the confidence interval in the range of confidence interval okay so we can see that the value of h null which is 150 is included in the range of confidence interval therefore H is unable to be rejected now on the last step which is conclusion so conclusion here will be similar to what is given in the traditional approach. Okay. Alright, I think that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching.